Hello everyone. Welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of Need Preparation, we'll be looking at previous year questions of chemistry in medical entrance examinations in India. Today, we'll be dealing with the chapter, the D and F block elements. This is the eighth chapter in the grade 12 syllabus for chemistry in CBSE. Let's look at our first question. Malachite is an ore of A silver, B mercury, C magnesium, D copper. To solve this question, let's look at our options and find out which of these has the ore malachite. Option A, silver, has the ore argentite. It is produced from the ore argentite. So option A is incorrect. Option B, mercury. Mercury is produced from the ore cinnabar. So option B is also incorrect. Option C, magnesium, is produced from magnesite. So therefore, option C is also incorrect. The right answer is option D, malachite. Malachite is the ore of option D, copper. Copper is the right answer. Next question. The chief ore of mercury is A, pyrolusite, B, bauxite, C, galena, D, cinnabar. Which of these is the right option? Let's look at the chemical formulae of each of our given ores. Option A, pyrolusite, is MnO2, which means it's an ore of mag manganese. So option A is incorrect. Option B, bauxite. Now, most of you are familiar that bauxite is the ore of aluminium, and it has the general formula Al2O3.xH2O. So, option B is also incorrect. What about option C, galena? Galena has the formula PBS, so it is an ore of lead. Option C is also incorrect. The right answer is option D, cinnabar. Cinnabar is, has the chemical formula. HGS, so it is the sulfide ore of mercury. Option D, cinnabar, is the chief ore of Hg, which is mercury. Option D is the right option. Next question. The transition element which shows the highest oxidation state is A, iron, B, vanadium, C, manganese, D, chromium. We need to find out which of these in any of its compounds has the highest oxidation state. Let's look at option A, iron. When we look at iron in Fe2O3, which is the oxide of iron, we notice that O3 will have a total charge of minus 6, so Fe2 will have a total charge of plus 6, so 1 Fe will have a charge of plus three. Okay, what about vanadium? When it comes to vanadium, we will look at the formula vanadium pentoxide. So O5 has a total charge of minus 10, so V2 must give you a total charge of plus 10. So therefore, one vanadium atom has the oxidation state of plus five one vanadium ion has an oxidation state of plus five in B2O5. What about option D? Chromium. Now chromium, when taken in K2Cr2O7, will give you the oxidation state of plus six, because here it will be having minus 14, there will be plus 2 here, I mean totally plus 2, so then they will have minus 12 totally, so this must give you plus 12, and 12 by 2 is 6, so one chromium ion has plus 6 oxidation state. But when we look at manganese in KMnO4, potassium permanganate, we notice that O4 is minus 8 totally, K has an oxidation state of plus 1, so we should have plus seven on one MN atom, 
in order to counteract the minus 8 of O4. So therefore, manganese has the oxidation state plus 7. Which of these is the greatest? Manganese, because it has plus 7. So option C, manganese, is the right option because it has an oxidation state of plus 7. While chromium has only plus 6, vanadium has only plus 5, and iron is even less with just plus 3. So option C is the right option. Next question. Gun metal is. Now we need to find out which of the combinations given below gives you gun metal. Let's look at each of the given combinations. Option D, Zn plus Sn. Zn stands for zinc, Sn stands for tin. Therefore, this alloy is called as the tin-zinc alloy. This is not gun metal, so option D is incorrect. What about option C? Cu plus Sn. So this is copper plus tin. Copper plus tin gives you the very famous alloy, bronze. Option C is again incorrect. Now, what about option A? Cu plus Zn, copper plus zinc. Again, another famous alloy. This is brass. Option A is also incorrect. The right answer is option B, Cu plus Sn plus Zn. So the alloy of copper, zinc, and tin gives you the gun metal. So option B is the right option. Let's look at this question. Transition elements form colored ions due to A, D, D, transition, B, fully filled d orbitals, C, smaller atomic radii, D, availability of S electrons. Well, the availability or non-availability of S electrons is immaterial because transition elements are characterized by an incomplete d orbital so the appearance or disappearance the availability or non-availability of s electrons do not form colored ions of transition elements so option d is incorrect now that also means that option b fully filled d orbitals will also be incorrect fully filled d orbitals are a characteristic of group 12 elements these are d-block elements, but they are not transition elements. So if we look over here, we have examples of zinc, cadmium, etc. that they are d-block elements, but they're not transition elements. So therefore, option B will also be incorrect. What about option C, smaller atomic radii? Well, if we look at smaller atomic radii, an element which has smaller atomic radii has more attraction on its electrons. So that means you won't be able to make the electron move from lower to higher oxidation state. It'll be very difficult to do so. So therefore, no colored ions. So therefore, option C is incorrect. The right answer is option A, DD transition. Now, transition elements, when they form compounds, they usually form complex compounds with other material known as ligands. And these ligands, what they do is they split the energy level of the valence d orbitals. So that means the d orbitals of the valence shell. So therefore, option A, DD transition, is the right option. So if they split it, then it becomes easier for electrons to move back and forth between energy levels. So therefore, there exists a transition. So DD transition is the reason why transition elements form colored ions. Let's move ahead. CuSO4, copper sulfate, and KCN, potassium cyanide, react to produce. CuCN2, CuCN, K3CuCN4, K4CuCN6. Well, this reaction between CuSO4 and KCN does not end at one step. It is, more, it is a reaction which has more than one step. If you look here, 
CUSO4 plus 2KCN gives you CUCN twice, Cu and then 2 cyanide plus KSO4, CUCN twice gives you 2CUCN plus CN twice, 2CUCN reacts with further KCN to form 2K3CUCN4. So therefore, option C will be the correct option. Option B, CUCN is actually an intermediate, so it cannot be it cannot be considered as the correct product, since in D block elements, these transition elements they form more number of steps in their reaction. So therefore, the compound that is finally produced is K3CUCN4 not CUCN, so option B is incorrect. And option A, CUCN2 does not exist because here there is no bracket. Nitrogen, in, if according to this formula, there will be two nitrogens and not two cyanides. So therefore, option A is incorrect. We do have a Cu and complete two cyanide ions reacting with copper because of plus two and minus two minus one, so this compound is present, but the compound present in option A is not, because there is no bracket between on the cyanide. Over here, it looks as if there is a copper, a carbon, and a nitrogen separately. And option D, K4, CUS, CN6, does not form in the below reactions. So option D is also incorrect. The right answer is option C, K3, Cu, CN4. Next question, which of the following ions is having greatest paramag paramagnetic ability? The greatest paramagnetic property among these four ions is for Cu+, Fe2+, Fe3+, or Cu2+. We need to find it out. Now, when it comes to paramagnetic property, it is exhibited by species with unpaired electrons. So if you have an ion with unpaired electrons, it is more likely to show paramagnetic ability. And when it comes to paramagnetic ability, the greater unpaired electrons it has, the more unpaired electrons it has, the greater paramagnetic character. So therefore, we need to find out which of these has the highest amount of par paramagnetic character. When we look at option A, Cu2, Cu+, let's write down the electronic configuration for it. So let's start from neon that takes care of the first 10 electrons. Then we will have 3s2, 3p6, and 3d10, the two, the two s electrons with the one S electron that was present was removed in order to have stable electronic configuration for this ion, Cu plus. Now, as you can see, an S orbital has two paired electrons. So both of these are paired. And then if it comes to P, there are six electrons in three of these, so they are paired. And in the D orbital, there are 10 electrons, that means each electron is paired. So therefore, this Cu plus has zero electrons. So it is not the greatest paramagnetic. What about option D, Cu2 plus? Well, in case of Cu2 plus, we will start again with the electronic configuration, Ne, 3s2, 3p6, and instead of 3d10, we'll have 3d9. So therefore, we can agree that there is one electron in the d orbital which is unpaired. So both of these are taken in calculation due to the fact that Cu has atomic number 29. Now what about the two Fe ions, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus? Let's start off with Fe2 plus, which is option B. Now before that, take care that iron has the atomic number 26. So when it comes to iron, iron, our electronic configuration is Ne, 3s2, 3p6, 
and 18 plus. So it's so since we have Fe2 plus, it'll be 26 minus 4, which is 24. 18 plus 6 will give you 24, and all the 6 are present in 3D orbital. Now in this 3D orbital, according to Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity, we'll be having first half fills. So each, each orbital will be half filled first, then they will get full filled. So as you can see, the last orbital in Fe2 plus has this configuration. So therefore four of these electrons are unpaired. So therefore we'll have four unpaired electrons. That's okay. So far it's been the greatest, but we should try out option C as well. Now option C is Fe3 plus, so that'll be neon, then 3s2, 3p6, and 3d5. So that means even this electron is not present. All of the orbitals are only half filled. So therefore, over here, we'll have five unpaired electrons. And among the following, Fe3 plus has the highest amount of unpaired electrons. And the greater the amount of unpaired electrons, the more the paramagnetic character. So therefore, option C is the right option. And this we found out after looking at the electronic configuration of both Cu of both copper ions and irons ions. So among these four ions, Fe3 plus has the greatest amount of paramagnetic character. Option C is the right option. Next question. More salt is shown by. So we need to find out which of these has the correct formula for Moore's salt. Now Moore's salt has the chemical name ferrous ammonium sulfate and when you look at the options you see that most of them have iron ions sulfate ions ammonium ions too however option c has k2so4 al2so4 price dot 24 h2o so this is actually the compound alum, so option C is incorrect. Now, let's look at the actual formula of ferrous ammonium sulfate. Ferrous ammonium sulfate is FeSO4 dot NH4 twice SO4, and it has 6H2O. Now, as you can see, options B and D will be incorrect because in option D it is FeSO3, so it's not a sulfate. Ferrous sulfate is FeSO4. And also in option B, you see that it is NH3 instead of NH4. Ammonium ion always has NH4 as its formula. So therefore, option A will be the right option. So more salt has the correct formula, FeSO4, NH24 twice, SO4 dot 6 H2O. Next question, German silver is an alloy of, we have four options. Let's look at our first option, iron, chromium, nickel. Now iron, chromium, and nickel form an alloy an important alloy known as stainless steel, the kind of steel that does not rust. Option A is incorrect. What about option B? Option B consists of silver, copper, and gold, and the alloy that forms them is also known as AgCuAu alloy. So option B is incorrect. What about option C? Cu, Zn, and nickel. Well, Cu, Zn, and nickel form another alloy which is not German silver. They form Cu, Zn, and I alloy. And also note that these three are actually coinage metals, so they can form a kind of coinage alloy. So option C. is incorrect.
Well, option C must be the correct answer because I got confused myself. If we look at option D, you see that the CU is at an SN. This is gunmetal. So option D is incorrect. Let me just rub it out. So there's only one answer that's left, which is option C. C use that in an NI, and that is German silver. Now, when we look at German silver, it has the composition 60% Cu, 20% Zn, and 20% Ni. So the right answer, again, is Cu, Zn, Ni, not Cu, Zn, Sn. The right answer is Cu, Zn, Ni. This is known as German silver. Option D is incorrect because the compounds here form the alloy that's formed is gunmetal. Option B because the alloy that's formed is AGCU AU alloy. And option A is incorrect because that forms stainless steel instead of German silver. German silver, again, is formed by Cu, Zn, and Ni. Copper, zinc, and nickel. Also note that all of these, copper, zinc, and nickel by itself, they form coinage metals. Next question, the composition of duralumin is, now what is duralumin? Duralumin is an alloy, and this alloy consists of aluminum and copper with trace amounts of manganese and magnesium. So that is the composition of duralumin. Duralumin is composed of Al, Cu, M, and NMG. So let's look at our options in this slide. Option A, AL and MG is incorrect because here MG is not in trace amounts, one, and two, there are no signs of copper or manganese. Now what about option B? Cu 56%, Z 24%, nickel 20%. Now this is also incorrect because A, we have Z and N I and Two, we don't have aluminum, manganese, or magnesium. This is closer to German silver because German silver has the formula Cu, Zn, and Ni. It's made up of copper, zinc, and nickel. What about option C? Cu 95%, Al 5%. Well, for one thing, these this option does not contain the quantity of the trace amounts of manganese and magnesium and two this forms aluminium bronze and not duralumin so option c is incorrect the right answer is option d al is 95 percent cu is four percent mn is 0 0.5 percent and mg is also 0 0.5 percent so option d is the right composition of duralumin. Let's move on to the final question of this episode. The number of water molecules in more salt is two, four, six, eight. If we look at the formula for more salt, it is FeSO4 dot NH4 twice SO4 dot six h2o so as you can see over here you find that the number of water molecules is six so the right answer is option c if we were to if if option a was correct then that would mean that ammonium first ammonium sulfate will only have two water molecules which is incorrect and the same logic applies for option b4 and option d8 According to the formula of more salt, which is FeSO4 dot NH4 twice SO4 dot 6 H2O, the number of water molecules in more salt or ferrosomonium sulfate is option C, 6. There are six water molecules in Moore's salt. And that concludes this episode of meat preparation. Now we have a lot of videos in meat preparation, don't forget to click the link of the playlist in the description down below for availing more of meat preparation.
And if you want to create, gain access to most of our other useful and interesting content, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Brain Blitz Audience. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye for now.